I haven't been called too many names in my life, but after last month's Nasdaq rally, where I went in with absolutely no testing, nobody knew how I could drive, well, the guys there, they start calling me L-Plate. And let's face it, I am a learner when it comes to this whole rallying business. But our show producers didn't like that one bit. So they told me, off you go, Siresh, off you go to school. So that's where we are. We are at Silverstone, home of British Motorsport, and we are here at the Porsche Driving Center, where the guys are going to teach me how to drive this beautiful yellow 911 Carrera 4, and most importantly, teach me how to drift this car. Drifting isn't the easiest thing in the world. And what's more, it can't be done in any old car. You may be able to slide a bit, but controlled and fast drifts require a car that lends itself to the experience. Something with the engine hanging over the rear axle perhaps. A car that has a frightening reputation for speed and lariness. The Porsche 911. Porsche started the center in Silverstone just two years ago and a typical session with a personal instructor involves four stages. The handling circuit, the kick plate, the eye sill, and finally, the low friction handling circuit. And with the help of my instructor, Simon, I was ready to master it all. Okay, so we're just entering the handling circuit here. The handling circuit's been designed to emulate a demanding A or B road within the UK. So, it's about one kilometre in length and it's very technical. There's lots of different elevation and different camber change around here. We generally start to coach on this environment as if it were a public road, two-way traffic, as that's where the majority of our customers do their driving. As the experience wears on, we can then start to look at the dynamics of racecraft and use the full width of the circuit. It was my turn, and to Simon's surprise, I got to grips with the on-road handling pretty quickly. Now this is a blind corner, so you can come in wide and start looking across and just increase the range. After that, we got progressively faster, using the full width of the track until I was on the perfect racing line, clipping apexes and really giving the car the beans. Yeah, much quicker, much easier. Simon seemed satisfied with my work, and so we moved on to stage two, the kick plate to test my reflexes. The, the red surface is a plastic coated surface, that's the simulation of sheet ice that we've got. Between the yellow raised points you can see is the kick plate, and that's operated by a hydraulic ram. So as your rear wheels cross the plate, it's going to kick right or left, which is going to kick the car into oversteer. Uh -huh. You've got a digital speedo just below your rev counter. Yeah. If your speed's 15 miles per hour or below, the plate won't activate at all. Okay. If you're up to 25 or over, you may struggle to control the car. Okay. So a good start point is sort of 20 to 22 miles an hour for your first run. Okay. And then as you start to get that, you can increase your speed. Now when he says hit the plate at 20, Simon means in miles per hour. So the first time the 911 was kicked sideways at around 40 kilometers an hour, I couldn't react quick enough. It's all about lightning quick reactions. The moment you feel the car sliding out, you need to dial in exactly the right amount of opposite lock. Good spin there, 10 out of 10 for the spin. <laughs> but saying it is a lot easier than doing it. So I let Simon show us the proper technique. It's in the speed of the hands. So the plan is to catch this. So up to 25 miles per hour, which we're about at now. Here we go. You see that? Yeah. So you see how quick the hands are? Yeah. If you didn't see Simon's hands move, don't worry. I was next to him and it took me a good while to see what he was doing. It does look really simple in slow motion, doesn't it? After Simon's frankly astounding demos, I was determined to get it right. And so, I kept trying. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and trying. Oh, shit, I turned the other way. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Until finally, I got it right. Simon was satisfied and we moved on to the next stage. 
after launching the car, I had to negotiate a slalom on a downhill low friction surface. This exercise is all about learning weight transfer. Because the surface has such low friction, even a slight change in weight balance upsets the rear. The trick is to use a throttle to kick the rear out and get the car sliding and thus pointed in the right direction. So we're on the low friction handling circuit here. Initially this was all the same asphalt. What we have now are corners that are a lighter grey colour and that's where we've diamond polished the surface. So that takes the top layer of asphalt off the surface and exposes the limestone underneath. And that means that we can slide the car around relatively easily. The no friction handling circuit is where all the day's lessons come together in a series of seriously sideways laps. Weight transfer to loosen the tail, kick on the throttle to get the car properly sideways modulating the throttle to keep the car sliding at just the right angle, aggressively off the throttle to again transfer the weight and flick the rear the other way to attack the next corner. Tandem drifts. I really don't think I've had so much fun in a car in such a long time. Simon, what can I say? Thanks a ton. It's been a fantastic day and mastering how to drift a 911. Oh God, I'm going to be talking about that for a very long time. But honestly, tell me, was there any good? Well, Suresh, I think from the outset, you had quite a good standard of driving anyway. Having looked at different aspects of your driving, like minimizing the understeer, making your lines smoother, vision through the corners, I think all that coupled together, you just need to work on now to make your driving consistent. I think you've done really well, and to master drifting one of these is no mean feat. But you look at the development that's taken place from early morning to lunchtime, and that's tenfold, so very well done. So well, the next rallies that are coming up are all dirt rallies, but I've mastered how to drive a high performance car on a racetrack. So it's been a great day, a great learning experience for me. But before we go, here's how you can get into one of these cars here at Silverstone.